my brain feels full. This is a comment I used to make to my husband all of the time because I just had so much going on and so many things stuck in my head bouncing around all of the time that I just felt like if I had to add anything more, I would explode. Now, I probably wouldn't explode, but I probably would have had a breakdown. So it was really necessary for me to find some sort of solution to this problem. I found that I had two problems really. One was that I was doing too much and the second that I had way too much information stored in my brain. Then along came this book, which is called Building a Second Brain by Tiago Forte. And literally it has changed my life with like not even being dramatic. It has changed my life. So this book is the second installment of our book club, which is where we talk through some of the key points and things that I've learned from different books that have really changed my life. So I will leave a link to the playlist, which is currently pretty sad, but getting better <laughs> down below. Make sure you hit the subscribe button if you're interested in more productivity, business, that kind of stuff, book recommendations here on this YouTube channel. So as I was looking at all these different things that I was trying to really store in my brain and realizing that was the problem, I realized I needed to have some sort of system in order to help with this. And this book has really helped. A second brain is basically just having all of that extra information located in the area where you're able to find it. And that second part is probably the biggest thing because I've always been big on writing things down. I'm always big about my planner and about my notebooks and things like that, but I'm not so great about being able to then find things. I'm actually known for just shuffling through and being like, oh, I wrote that on that random sticky note. Where did I put it? And that's much more my vibe than other things. So going into this really was a little bit of a stretch, especially because Tiago suggests that you use a digital format for your note taking, note keeping information. And if you've been around here, you know that even though I have a YouTube channel and a blog and an online business, your girl is not about the online things. Like I am not about the apps. I am not about any of that kind of stuff. I am analog all the way. And so that was something I was really concerned about, but I have found some ways around. I still use my notebooks, but I also use my online system to kind of work together and really make my second brain work for me, which is what this whole thing is about. It's not just having the second brain, but really making it work for you. So let's talk about how you can use your second brain and kind of the four different steps that Tiago outlines in his book. But first, let's go check on the doggies because they were whining and crying so I let them out, but now I, I wanna see what, what they're doing. All right, dogs are still dogging, so I guess I'll leave them out there while they are content and we'll just film it, we'll just film in all the places and it'll be great. So let's talk about the four different steps that Tiago suggests for keeping and storing information in a way that's actually going to be helpful. So step number one is to capture. Step two is organize, step three is distill, and step four is express. To be honest, I've spent most of the time working in steps one and two, so that's what we'll spend most of this video on, but that's okay, we'll, we'll talk about the other ones as well. So step number one is the most important, and that is capture. The idea of capturing things in your brain came well, I guess it probably didn't come from somewhere, but the most popular thing is from the book Getting Things Done by someone whose name escapes me right now, but we can put it here for you instead. Um, but this book was one of the first like real productivity books. And so it was really big, the idea of capturing things. Now, this is something that I've always been pretty good about because your girl loves a good notebook and I write everything down. Um, but capturing really in a way that is gonna be useful long-term was something that was new to me. So when it comes to capturing an idea, it literally just means you have an idea, you write it down, or you learn something new, you write it down. You find something interesting, you write it down. And just keeping all those things written down so that you don't have to go back and find them again or have that thought and you don't lose that thought, which that one was a big one for me, especially because I do a lot of things like lesson planning, and I have, you know, church lessons and I have YouTube channels. Like I have a lot of things to keep track of. And so losing ideas is like my worst enemy. I need to be able to keep track of all the different ideas that I have and keep them as well as ideas, you know, other things that I learn and things, just all the things like that. So the idea of capture is to just write things down. 
Now, where you capture things does matter though, because you need to capture it in a way that's gonna be useful. So kind of narrowing down where you capture things is gonna help you with the other steps, like the next one, which will be organized. So when it comes to capturing, you kind of want to have a few different things. The biggest part of my second brain system is the app slash website slash whatever you want to call it, which is Evernote. Evernote is a note taking app that I purchased after using reading this book, um, not because of the book, but just as the one that I decided to use. And I do not buy a lot of apps. I do not buy a lot of software and it has really made a huge difference. In Evernote, you're able to save notes, create notes. You can add text, you can add videos, you can add audio, you can add all these different things. You can add links to other notes, you can add links to websites. And so when I find things that are interesting, I can check it into Evernote and I can save it from there. So whether that's a YouTube video that was helpful or a quote that I found interesting, I'll take that and I throw it into Evernote. Now, the reason I picked Evernote rather than something else is because Evernote has the ability in the paid version to be able to read PDFs. So you can scan a PDF and read it. Oh, we have a friend now. Um, and you can also scan writing and it can read your writing. And y'all, that was the most revolutionary. And that is the reason I used it because I told you, I'm an analog person. I like to write things down. I like to take notes by hand. I enjoy that. I like the act of writing. And so I didn't want to be all the way digital. So Evernote offered me a good kind of middle ground because I'm able to still capture things in different places. And I'm also able to put it into Evernote so that I don't lose it because that was the problem was I was writing things down and never finding them again. So now if I write down a plan or I write down notes from a book or I write down things I learned at church or you know, whatever I'm writing, I can then go and put that into Evernote and I can search and Evernote can find it because you can read my handwriting, even my cursive. Okay. Cause your girl writes in cursive because I should have been bored in the 1800s. I didn't, I wasn't even taught cursive in school. I literally taught it to myself. So when I capture things, I put them in specific notebooks. So for example, I might put it in my planning notebook. I might put it in my content notebook. I might put it different places like that or I put it into Evernote or I put it into my notebook and then I scan it and put it into Evernote. Either of those are fine. I like giving myself options because I don't like being stuck with something that I'm not happy with. Then comes the next step. So once you've captured everything, you need to organize. So I try to sit down every week or two weeks and organize my Evernote and just make sure that everything has a place and a purpose. I am currently using Tiago's version of organization, which puts things into four buckets. And this is based on the actionability of the item and not necessarily like where it's from. So like, not necessarily like book notes, but more like productivity um, would be the bucket that it would go into. So the four buckets that we're using are projects, areas, resource, and archive. So the acronym is called PARA. I actually start all of my notes in archive. I have them immediately go to my archive. Evernote has like notes. You have notes that go in notebooks that go in stacks. So I have a stack called archive and I have a note book that's called archive and a notebook called inbox. So everything starts actually in the archive so that that way I can find it. Um, and then from there, I organize through and figure out where things are gonna go. So projects are timely things that have a due date to them. So something that I'm working on currently that's going to end at some point. And so these are the most actionable things like things we are currently working on. So that's projects. Then you have areas which are more like parts of your life that are more ongoing. So it's not necessarily a project. So some examples of projects might be things like, I, I wrote on all children's church examples. I don't know why that was on my brain, but maybe I need to go write a lesson. Um, so for a project for children's church, it might be, um, doing like a room transformation. We're about to talk about growing in Christ. And then we're talking about fruit of the spirit. So we're going to do like plants everywhere and stuff like that. So I've been gathering different pictures from Pinterest and I've been looking at different Amazon listings for like, you know, picket fencing and stuff like that. And I've been adding those to my, um, you know, classroom transformation children's church project. This is a project because it's something I'm going to start and I'm going to stop and then I won't need that information necessarily again, or a specific children's church lesson might be a project because it's something that's happening on this date and then it's over. 
an area might be ideas for children's church lessons or it might be a list of the students who normally come with their birthdays or it might be improvement ideas like things that i need to do those are things that might go in my children's church area notebook because those are things that are more ongoing if it's content wise if i am like launching something that might be my project but my list of ideas for my content for my videos for my blogs that would be in my areas so areas are more broad and it's things that aren't necessarily something you're going to start and stop necessarily obviously it's your own system you can do whatever you want the next area is resources and this is not very actionable stuff this is stuff that you like oh hey that's a cool article that i read but you don't currently have any plans to use them a lot of my book notes end up here because it's like oh that's some inf interesting information about productivity or about whatever but i might not necessarily need it right this second and so it just goes in there and kind of hangs out in there until i need it and when i need it then it's there and i'm able to use it and the last area is archive and so those are things that were actionable but you don't need them anymore i love that they go into archive and not that you're deleting them because then if i need them again i'm able to find them and to be fully honest the best thing i've found for organization wise is just to use the search bar um so i can go to the search bar and i can search for whatever i'm looking for and i find that to be the most efficient way to find pretty much anything and this whole idea is a productivity system so we're trying to, we're trying to get things done quickly you know so you that search bar to your advantage that's the pair method that is used in organization i spend most of my time in the capture and in the organization area of this system but there are two more systems so the next one is called distill so distill is when you go through your notes and you review them and you look at them and you come up with actionable items so this might be something that you do on a weekly or bi-weekly basis and you look at your notes and you come up with actual action items like to do things things you need to do based on those things that you did so for example I'm currently reading a book all about copywriting and I'm writing notes about the copywriting as I go along but when I finish the book then I'm going to distill all that information and I'm going to kind of summarize it and I'm going to come up with my action items things that I actually want to do so for example I know that I want to go and I want to redo some of my landing pages and some of my like course selling pages based on the things that i have learned in the book because it has some really good ideas and templates and formats and things like that so that's an action item that i'm distilling out of those notes so now it's not just like random information and random things that are going in there but i'm taking that information and i'm turning it into things that we can actually do and if you've seen any of my youtube channels all 8,000 of them, you know that my whole thing is having actionable things that you can actually do and giving you things that you can do. And so it's that's a really important part of my process as well as it might be for you. So distilling your information into action items is step number three in this organizational process. So use all that information that you have learned and collected and stored and use it for something so that you're actually, you know, doing something because otherwise... What's the point? I mean, yes, learn for learning's sake, but also learn for actionable reasons because we like that too. So those are the different steps of the Tiago Forte's Building a Second Brain. This has truly revolutionized my life. I read the book last year and I have gone into video after video trying to figure out what maybe the best situation is for my personal second brain. If you're interested in learning about that and kind of my hybrid system for like digital and also analog planning and note taking and all that kind of stuff let me know down below in the comments and we can do a whole video where we go through kind of my second brain system and how i go through that and my process and really i think the most interesting thing personally would be how i integrate the digital and the non-digital aspects all the way in there so let me know down below if that's something that you're interested in if you read this book and what your suggestions would be for books based on this one that we all liked i will leave the link to this book down below and i'll see you in the next one bye mm -hmm.